So um, I think one of the things when I first started to make the transition from being a TA to being an instructor, or the, something that was the most intimidating for me was trying to come up with assessments and being responsible for being the, the one, the last final one who had to decide whether or not the students were understanding what I was doing and coming up with something, some sort of meaningful assessment. And so I was hoping today we could try to talk through what how, some, some of the processes that I went through in, terming, in determining what kind of assessments I wanted to do and structuring those assessments and making sure that the kinds of things that I was asking my students to do in class and to demonstrate their understanding were testing the things that I was actually interested in them having learned and that I was not emphasizing things that I thought were not important. And so I'll go through some examples of things that I find important in my teaching and hopefully we'll be able to work in strategies if some of these things are important to you, maybe some other ideas that other people have. Um, and we can talk about other things that you're interested in and strategies for that. So hopefully this will be somewhat collaborative. Okay, that works. So uh, first I have a couple of statements and if you grabbed one of those notebooks from outside and have a pen on you or if you have a really great memory and you can think about this, um, I just wanted to take a minute to let people think about what sorts of things are important to you in your teaching and what sorts of things you maybe want to I guess you can answer, I, I've provided three sentence stems for you to think about, prompt some ideas of thinking about what's important to you in your teaching. So if you can meditate on that for a moment. Okay, so I'll continue thinking if, you're, if you have any, any thoughts in mind. Um, and I'll walk through some of my answers to these sentence stems and some of the strategies that I've used so far in my teaching. So one of the things that I really want my students to be able to do is to think critically. So in 10 weeks, I teach a class on restoration ecology. And so all the examples that I use will be based on that class, but hopefully you can fill in some examples from classes that you teach. But in restoration ecology, there's no way that I can teach any students everything that they need to know about restoration ecology in 10 weeks, maybe not even a lifetime. We don't even know everything that you would need to know to do it right. And so what I think is really important is for them to be able to learn how to think like a restoration ecologist, to be able to learn how to learn about whatever topic it is. And so some of the things that I've done to encourage critical thinking in terms of my assessments are um, I replaced all of the in-class exams with take-home problem sets because I wasn't really interested in having people in the skill of being able to write things down in a short period of time and memorize and regurgitate and I wanted them to have the time to be able to think critically about these more complicated questions that I wanted to ask and so I give them more time to be able to do that rather than the 75 minute class session that we have. Um, I also have incorporated a project into the class that requires students to apply lecture concepts to a real world example. Ideally one, this, the one that I use is a hometown restoration project and so I try to get them to pick something, maybe a project that they've seen and then think about how the way that the people are approaching that project mirrors um, how we would recommend people approach restoration because often restoration as it's done in the real world is not very scientific and so I'm hoping to expose them to that sort of idea and be able to think critically about what are the strengths and weaknesses of some of these real world examples of restoration. Another thing that I did was to eliminate multiple choice quizzes because I think that it was giving students the wrong impression about the material, a lot of the things that I was trying to teach weren't really amenable to having a, multiple choices that were clear choices and they also, um, there often wasn't 
as clear of a right answer. And so when I presented multiple choice quizzes and wanted to have discussions, I think students got really confused about whether or not there should be a right answer because of the format. And so I took that out. Um, has anyone else had um, or seen strategies for like encouraging critical thinking in classes? And this is a STEM session, obviously, but in other sessions would be interesting to you in other fields. How to encourage critical thinking in the classroom. I think one of the things that I start to try to do in engineering classes is to like not start at the point that a traditional like textbook problem would start, but start with something more um, loosely defined and have students make more of the abstractions that are required to get to like a tractable problem mathematically. Um, more authentic to what we would be doing in the field. Features of the mm -hmm. system are important to be modeled. That's cool. Anybody else? Yep. So I was teaching a class, I did an introduction to electrical engineering, and uh, I gave a quiz on the course type, I tried the whole thing, and I read the syllabus, and I just they were all non-electrical engineers, and so it was an intro introduction class. And so I asked them to just write down four or five examples of where they might have encountered examples of electrical engineering in their lives. And, uh, so that way I said, you know, no answer is right or wrong, so there's no pressure. But just think through them, right? Cool. So, okay, that's great. Anyone, anyone else have ideas? Yeah, sure. So I'm math. Math, okay. So maybe trying to in encourage multiple modes of, yeah. of thinking, that's helpful, yeah. Anybody else have ideas to share? No? Okay. So another thing that I um, feel like is really important about assessments is that they're a means of providing timely feedback. So one of the problems that I encountered in this class when I inherited it from my advisor was that we had a couple of different assessments. There was a midterm, there was a final, there was a lab journal that students would turn in at the end. They had a presentation in the last week. And so everything where they got a grade, it came almost at the end or after it was too late to be able to learn from the mistakes that they had made. And so every year they would take a midterm. Every year most students would do very poorly on the midterm and they would all be very upset. And then my advisor would feel obligated to offer some sort of extra credit to make everyone feel better about themselves. And I don't really like extra credit. I want them to learn what I think is important. And if I'm not testing what I think is important, then I should incorporate that originally. And if that's what I think is important, then that's what they have to be able to do. And so um, I think being able to provide timely feedback is important to be able to let them practice and learn how to do the things that are, that are most important. So one of the things that I did um, was just during, during, the, during lectures, I tried to use eye clicker question, questions, which I know I said I try to move away from multiple choice questions, but I think when we're doing them together in class, every single time we go through a question, we'll, I'll have people debate whether, why they chose a certain answer, and we'll go through every option, and we'll come to a conclusion if there is a right answer, and if there's not, I try to make that more clear than maybe I have in previous years. That's something I'm learning about. Um, so testing comprehension immediately so that they can catch misconceptions right away. Um, I also broke up almost every single assignment that they have now into chunks throughout the quarter. So instead of having one lab journal that they turn in at the end, they turn in weekly lab write-ups. And um, instead of having one project that's due at the end, it's broken into three chunks throughout the quarter. Um, instead of having one midterm, we have two problem sets. So everything, they have multiple iterations to be able to um, learn from their mistakes. And part of that is getting feedback from their TAs and from me. And providing in-depth quality feedback takes an incredible amount of time. Um, and so what 
I tried to do to be able to get, give them enough time to do that was to, or to give the TAs, make sure the TAs have enough time, was to um, eliminate everything that we didn't think was important. So that involved cutting out a lot of the parts of the lab notebook that they used to have in order to focus on giving them feedback on the things that, um, that we thought were really important. So they used to miss synthesis questions all the time. And so now we only have them do synthesis. And so the third thing that I wanted to focus on in my teaching is fostering a personal connection with the material. I think for me that means a couple of, of things, their engagement with the material, but also connecting to a community within the classroom. And so a couple of the things, I, I feel like that's an important way for the students to um, maintain their interest, but also be interested in continuing with this topic. I think it's important for, I, I like to inspire people to continue on in restoration ecology. I feel like the earth needs more people thinking about how to restore. And so what I've done is, um, now that I don't have any in-class midterms, I have take-home assignments. I think it's not realistic to assume that they're going to work independently and not discuss. So I encourage them to work together and to collaborate and talk out their ideas with their friends and have them write it up, write it up individually. But I encourage them to work together instead of discouraging that. I have also tried to incur incorporate group work into both the lecture and the lab. So they have a group project that they do in the lab um, and lecture. I'll have them do some think, pair, and share, but I'll, also sometimes I'll have everyone get up out of their seats in the lecture hall and it's chaotic and move into the aisles and work on group activities. And sometimes it's messy, but what I've heard is that people really enjoy it and they have really great experience being able to work through some of the problems that problems or things that might show up on the final. Um, I also invite guest lectures to come and discuss aspects of the material that I can't speak to very well myself, so I focus mainly on uh, terrestrial and plant, and plant ecology, and so I bring people in who can talk about aquatic and marine ecosystems, and that gives people more ideas of how they might be able to apply this work according to their own interests. And then this year, um, I'm incorporating a new piece where I'm coordinating a career panel to give students an example of what are all the different sorts of careers and ways that different um, agencies look at restoration and think about restoration and um, so that they have diversity of careers, but also they see a lot of different people involved in restoration. And so um, hopefully they will see someone that they can identify with either in terms of their work interests or something else about them. So um, for whatever time we have left, if anyone has ideas about any of the topics, I guess, that we've covered, or if there's anything else that you value or you have ideas about how to incorporate that into your, in the class, what you do in the classroom or how you assess your students, I thought we could discuss that a little bit. Yep. It's more of a question for you because I've been taking high-value relationship to these sort of like questions necessarily in the material that you would have lectured on. So how do you ensure that the students do all in a way that the classes should be able to perform better classes feature on, especially in more introductory questions and software level classes without sacrificing the things that you have discussed here as well. Yeah, so I think that that's important. And, and so the class that I teach is an upper division graduate class. It doesn't feed in anything else that they would do. So, so I don't, I'm not constrained in that way. But what I, what I did originally was I looked at all the material that we used to cover in the class and actually cover twice as much as what used to be covered. And I'm doing all of these interactive things somehow. So I think being um, conscious of how you use your time in the classroom and looking at your watch um, can help address that. But what I did was I looked at, OK, what are the most important topics? and making sure that I cover those topics and finding ways to fit the eye clicker questions and group discussions into making sure that we're learning. Because it doesn't make sense to cover everything if they're not retaining, retaining it. I don't know if that helped, helped you. But I did cut some things out. I cut out some examples. But yeah, it is a, you have to balance that. It, it will depend, I would say, on what the require what's required of you to cover in that class. Are we done? Okay. <laughs>